All right, so here we are in the oven. I've got the knife packet loaded up. I've got the seam side down. Nobody's ever told me to do this, and again, it just kind of seemed the obvious thing to do, just in case it tried to unroll or something out of the top once it uh, starts inflating from all the heat pressure. Got my kiln ready to go, so I'm gonna shut it up. And hit start. And it's at 81 degrees right now, it's gonna take a while. I'll be back later, and then we'll be off to cryo next, and then our temper cycles, and then we'll go through uh, unpacking it and inspecting it, and we'll move on from there. Okay, now we're uh, just about done with the heat treat, so we're going to get ready to pull it out. What we're going to do is called a plate quench. It's not your traditional what you've seen in the movies or on TV about them pulling the knife. All right, turn. Okay, now that we're just about done with our heat treat, we're getting ready to do our quench. What we're going to do is called a plate quench. It's not your traditional quenching that you've seen with them pulling it out of the fire, dunking it into a water bucket, but it serves to do the same purpose. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull it out. You want to use some kind of heavy-duty fire gloves, either a bunker gear structure gloves or some kind of welding glove, because it's you know extraordinarily hot inside the kiln. So we're going to pull it out. We're going to set it in the plates, and we're going to vise it or clamp it down in the vise. You can also use a basic carpenter clamps, anything else, but something that'll just hold the blade tight within the plates. And after that, we're going to use some compressed air, and that's called a forced air quench. We're just going to blow it between the plates. And then after that, we'll move on to the cryo. And the uh, cryo will be about two hours long, which I'm not going to show you. It's not really extraordinary. But uh, after the cryo, we'll move into our uh, tempering cycles. And after that, your heat treat will be done. So as soon as this countdown stops, we'll, we'll pull it out and we'll be on our way. Alright, so now that it's been air quenched and it's down to room temperature, or in my case, Texas temperature, which is you know, 100 degrees out here right now, I'm going to go and open it up, and after I get it opened up, I'm going to inspect it, make sure there's no cracks or uh, any defects in it from the heat treating, which are not entirely uncommon, but if you did your prep work properly, it should not be an issue. The real issues come in whenever you have grease or dirt or oils still on the blade and during heat treating that will focus that dirt or oil. And you can see just by the package there's significant oxi oxidation on the stainless steel wrapping and that's why we're using it because we'd rather it oxidize the disposable wrapping than our blade. Now, I'm just going to dunk it into my water bucket, get it cleaned off. And dry it off. All right, now I'm going to inspect the blade. Now you see a lot of the rainbow looking stripes on there, and that's totally common. That's not what we're worried about. What we're worried about is any of the extreme interior angles, like right there at the choil. Now up here in 
the handle where I did the drill for the uh, fire steel down here in the jimping up in the up in the uh, gut hook. Now you're going to look for any kind of cracks into the body of the metal. Grab a magnifying glass, get a closer look at your uh, likely spots right there. And after I turn off the video, I'm going to do that myself because naked eye really isn't enough to see it. But another thing I'm looking at is that my heat treat was successful overall, meaning that I didn't weld any of the foil to this, so I don't have to go back and get on the grinder with it. Everything I do from here on out is going to be with the sandpaper, and the particular finish I'm putting on this one is going to be with my media blaster, which we'll get to that later. All right, so I've got it inspected. I checked it out. It came through heat treat, no problem at all. And I don't know how good the focus is on here to try to get in there and show you all the potential problem areas, but they all came out clean. So it looks like a good heat treat. It's nice and hard. Next up, we're gonna do cryo. Uh, note on cryo, uh, use liquid nitrogen, and that's the golden standard of it because it's the coldest thing we can get a hold of to do it. I'll put it in there for about two hours, three hours. Uh, I've heard some people putting it in for up to 24 hours. I haven't seen any scientific data or study that really suggests there's any benefit for cryo treating more than a couple hours, so I don't even bother with it because you spend enough time on the temper cycles afterwards anyways. So uh, that being said, I know some people also use dry ice. There's all kinds of discussion and argument about whether it is beneficial to do it or not. My line of thinking is that some cryo is better than nothing, even if it's not as cold as the nitro is going to get you. So if you don't have access to a doer, if you don't have any nitro, just get some dry ice and a cooler with some acetone or uh, I think kerosene some people use with it. And uh, you know, drop it in there for a couple hours, because even if it only gives you a couple of points on, or a couple halves a point on hardness, um, it should increase your toughness quite a bit, which is the main advantage I've seen in uh, my field testing with my knives. So I'm going to put it in there. Uh, once we pull it out, next step up would be uh, temper cycles. All right, so here we are, fresh out of cryo after uh, just about four hours. Took my kid to the pool, took a nap and everything. You know, like I said before, it doesn't matter how long you keep it in there, as long as you have it in for at least a couple hours. Um, you know, as far as I know, I've, I've seen to have good results for it. So it's my wife's favorite part. I'm going to put it in the kitchen oven for the first temper cycle. Uh, temper cycles need to be at least a couple hours long. And you want to do at least two of them. Now I like to hang it from the oven rack. Oh, I'll get that other rack out. There we are. Alright, so I like to hang it from the oven rack, just so it's suspended in midair. You don't really have any metal contact with the grates or anything. Yeah, it helps it heat and cool a little bit more evenly. So I'm going to set it up for its first temper cycle, and I'll go from there. So, there you have it. After a hardening cryo and three temp cycles later, we got our finished blade. <clears throat> because I've made lots of knives from this batch of LMAX, and I've done the same heat treat on all of them, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is going to come out to 62 HRC. I'm still going to test it, but I already know what it's going to be because I've used that LMAX and I've used that heat treating and it's been extraordinarily consistent for me, but I still test just to make sure. So next up we're going to get this thing cleaned up and uh, start getting ready to put some scales on it and uh, yeah, then it'll start really looking like a knife. Hope this has been helpful for you, and as always, go ahead and subscribe if you have it, and uh, stay tuned for videos to come.